Hi everyone, my name is Alex McNeil and I'll be walking through my experience developing a Spinnaker plugin for the first time. Before we get started, let me give you a brief summary of my background so you have a better idea of my perspective while developing this plugin. I'm a senior engineer in the PAS build and deploy team at Xero. My day-to-day -day job is supporting the tooling used for building and deploying applications and improving the developer experience in this space. I started out my career mostly working in C-sharp, but over recent years, I've mostly been working in Golang, JavaScript, and Python. I'm familiar with Java, but haven't worked in it since Polytech. I have a basic understanding of the Spinnaker services and architecture. This is from spinning, setting up Spinnaker in our environment at zero. So what were we wanting to achieve? We wanted to send an event to New Relic every time a deployment pipeline is run. This event needed to contain the artifact that was deployed, a link to the execution, and the outcome of the deployment. This is so we have a history of all the deployments for auditing and debugging purposes. New Relic provides an API for reporting custom events. The only required field for this API is event type. You can then divide define any key value pairs you want to be sent with the event. This is an example of the payload we wanted to send to New Relic. So there are a few ways to achieve this, which we considered before deciding to create an Orca stage plugin. The first solution we considered was the inbuilt webhook stage. This was good because it was already built into Spinnaker, so no development work would be required. It was also good because the result of the event would be visible to the user. This, however, didn't meet our requirements, as it would require the new relic insert key to be defined in the pipeline definition. The second solution we had was to create an echo plugin. This was subscribed to all of the pipeline events and then fetched the data it needed from the execution to send to new relic. This was good because no secrets needed to be defined in the pipeline definition the insert key would be passed into the plugin via its configuration. It was also good because it picks up every deployment. Instead of having a stage defined in every pipeline, it just picks up any pipeline which runs. It was bad because we'd have to query a lot of data from the execution and figure out what data we needed for our deployment event. It was also bad as the result would not be visible to users. With the stage not being in the pipeline, the user would not see the result of their deployment event. And it was also bad because it requires development work. The solution we came to in the end was the Orca stage plugin. This would allow us to add a stage to the pipelines where it sends a new relic event off. This was good because there'll be no secrets in the pipeline definition again. This will be passed in via the plugin configuration. It's also good because the result will be visible to users. Because the stage is in the pipeline, we can inform users of the deployment events result. Yet again, it was bad because it requires us to do development work. So now that we had our base to build off, we had to get an HTTP client in order to send our requests off to New Relic. There were two ways we found to do this. The first way was to use the HTTP client provided by Orca. You can get this client through the plugins SDK object that's passed to your execution. This was good because it would be kept up to date by Orca. It was also good because it comes with built-in integrations with logging and monitoring. However, it was bad for us because it was hard to figure out. We didn't know exactly what client we were getting back and what the contract was. The other option we had was to define our own client. This was good because we could choose any client we wanted. And it was also good because we could choose a client that had good documentation. This was bad, however, because we'd have to keep the client updated ourselves. In the end, we, we decided to go with our own client. I believe this isn't a good long-term solution and we should probably use the client provided by Orca. But for now, to get this plugin made, we decided to go with our own. 
The next thing we needed to do was update the plugin's configuration. The first thing we updated was the configuration option. This is the data that's passed in from the Spinnaker configuration. We added the event API endpoint, the insert key, and the event type. We also updated the input object. This is the data that's passed in from the pipeline definition. We added the title, the environment, the execution URL, and the change status. Finally, we updated the output object. This is the data that's returned to the execution after the stage is completed. We simply put the status code here so we could easily debug what error codes we were getting. There's also context, what we didn't use. This is for passing data between different parts of the stage. Since we're using a simple stage, we didn't need it. Now that we have the configuration and the HTTP client sorted, it's time to put everything together. This is the main block of logic in our plugin. I've removed the create new relic event function as it's just posting data to the new relic events API. As you can see, we have our class, the new relic deployment stage class, what takes a configuration. This is the same configuration we were talking about in a previous slide. We have a main function, execute. This is a function that's called when the stage is executed. This function takes the stage input and returns the stage output. The first thing we do is pull out all of the data from the configuration and the stage input. From the configuration, we pull out the endpoint, insert key, and event type. And from the stage input, we pull out the title, environment, change status, and execution URL. We then create a new relic event object. This is an object that's going to be turned into JSON and sent to new relic. We then call our function that's going to send the request off to new relic. This function is going to be passed the event to send, the endpoint to send it to, and the insert key to authenticate with. This function then returns us the response. We now need the change status to return back to the pipeline. To get this, I check the response code. If the response code is not 200, we know it's failed, and therefore the stage is terminal. Otherwise, we set the stage to succeeded. We then create the stage output object, populating it with the response code and return that from the function. This data is then available in the pipeline execution. So now that we've made our first plugin, what were our main stumbling blocks? The thing that took us the most time was renaming everything. Due to a lack of experience with Gradle and Java packages, it took us quite a while to make sure all the package, package references were correct and make sure the build was working as expected. The second thing we struggled with was the HTTP client. We were unable to figure out how to use the client provided by Orca. And to make sure we got this plugin created in time, we decided to go with our own client. We really think it would be better to use one provided by Orca in the long term, and we'll probably look at moving to it in the future. The third thing we struggled with was secret substitution. We were unable to use secret substitution in our plugin configuration. We found out this was because the secret substitution was being done after the plugin has started. This has been fixed in V2 of the plugin framework. In summary, the initial setup was hard for us due to a lack of experience in Java and having to figure out the objects that were being injected to us from Orca. After we got the past the initial setup, it was very easy to make changes, and we've had no, no trouble adding features to this plugin. I'm really keen to write more plugins, and our team already has many ideas for new plugins we could make. Thanks for listening, everyone, and good luck with your plugins.